uh, GPS tracking, right? That drains your battery life. So, winner, winner, chicken dinner right here for those big, crazy, long efforts. Here we go, here we go, in the studio, not talking about running shoes today. We're talking about this Casio, the G-Shock GBDH 1000. Oh man, look at it there. Okay, not the question of the day, but I gotta know, who owned a Casio watch, let's say in the 90s, or like the early 2000s? I know that I did. It was my go-to running watch back in the day when I was in high school up in Buena Vista. Uh, that in no GPS, obviously back then. Like we just had, it was so simple, and it was kind of I kind of miss those times, the simple times of no GPS. I love Strava, don't get me wrong, but um, anyway, it's a little little nostalgia here in my hand. And I gotta say thank you to Casio from the outset for sponsoring this video, sending this watch to me about oh, about five or six weeks ago, right before the Pikes Peak Marathon, and letting me test it out, put it through the paces, and all sorts of different different circumstances, whether it's running here through the city or up in the mountains as you know I like to do but I'll always always be straight up with you this is not my area of expertise running shoes are as you can tell I love running shoes therefore um, I will point to you right now upper right hand corner to the DC Rainmaker he is my go-to YouTube channel for learning about running gear that is tech related okay so I just want to be totally transparent uh, this is not where I live but I'm willing to test I'm willing to go outside my comfort zone is a better way to put it every now and then all right let's dive into it the Casio G-Shock GBDH 1000 that's quite the uh, quite the mouthful for a name um, let's start first of all with a few drawbacks okay and then we'll dive into the positives just a few drawbacks right up front as you can probably tell just holding it in my hands here it is big and I think probably the engineers at Casio know it's big it's in a classic Casio again throwback to the 90s it's in that old school Casio look which some people don't like at all you know it's not a sleek look it's more of a rugged um not tech look, but it's it's definitely a rugged, rugged look, okay? So it's big, it's a little heavy. Here it is on your screen. I put it on the scale, so I believe just over 100 grams. There it is on your screen in ounces as well. Um, and putting it on the wrist, it definitely, like, okay, at faster paces, let me just put it on real quick. At faster paces, it felt a little clunky on the wrist, okay? You know, when I'm going six minutes a mile down the trail or whatever the case may be, it did feel heavier than my, in fact, I probably wore this watch four or five times when I had a Koros on this wrist or let's say my Sun 2 watch that I love on this wrist. So I could feel it felt a little clunky on the wrist, 100%. Also, uh, the wristband is a resin-based wristband okay i'm trying to take it off right now resin based and again compared to uh, the other wristbands it just feels a little stiff and maybe it's going to break in over time i don't you know i know i kind of have a, a pretty good gauge as to how long midsoles will last on running shoes i'm not exactly sure on this resin band from uh casio but it just feels a little stiff i'm actually Frankly, now that I now to the touch, after wearing it for about a month now, I, it does feel a little more loose um, uh, to the touch and to just strapping it on the wrist. So that's a good sign, just for that kind of comfort level as you're putting the wrist on or putting the watch on your wrist. Also, uh, classic uh, typeface on the face of the watch. You can probably, here it is on your screen. It's just like an old, again, old school classic typeface. Nothing fancy, no colors. Some people might like that, some people will not like that. So I personally didn't mind, again, pulling it out of the box. I was like, oh boy, this looks like the actual typeface on the watch looks old school. It's gonna take a little bit of a transition to my eye. Uh, but I did notice that the, the screen was very easy to read in bright sun and then also in darker conditions okay a good light on the watch when you're out there in the dark uh, but it's a high high contrast a hundred percent through that watch face but it is old school okay it's just an old school look on the face of the watch and the last drawback is you know the price point four hundred dollars that's a little high I think for a GPS watch these days 
Um, I think you can, you know, there's plenty of watches under $300 now. So who knows? We'll see in their next iteration of this watch if the price will begin to drop just a little bit. Now let's move on to the positives for this Casio watch. It can charge by the sun. How crazy is, I've never owned a GPS watch or a smart watch that, that can uh, have the capability of charging through the sun. That's pretty amazing. And based on the research I did, if you let this, sun, this watch sit in the sun for two or more hours a week, it will recharge itself and last indefinitely, okay? I actually uh, was just charging it, and here it is on your screen, very easy to, to uh, charge on the back of the watch, UB, USB based charging, and that's how I charge the watch, uh, but you can charge this watch with solar power. I think it's amazing. The next, as I already mentioned, positive is it's rugged, rugged, rugged unbelievable build quality like i think you could throw this thing off a cliff and it would be absolutely like truly absolutely fine throwing this thing off a cliff um next i love this simplicity it has a very easy to find stopwatch again like just going to track meets in high school or college or cross country like there's nothing like having a good old stopwatch just really easy to find that is not connected you know is not gps it's not based off of the gps so anyway i love the fact that it has a stopwatch um it's not a touch screen it's button based i prefer that so some uh new GPS watches, you can control everything just touching the, uh, the screen. I have found that at least for training, maybe if it was a smart watch with apps, uh, obviously like the Apple Watch, but I prefer button-based navigation through a watch rather than touch screen. And on that note, another positive for me is the fact that it is not a smart watch. It is not app based. I'm sure at some point I will be able to test out an Apple watch for running. But at this point, I do like like simpler, the better. You all know me like I don't like things to get complicated. Why? So I can focus on the training. That is why I don't like complexity with tech out there on the trails, especially um, or getting ready for an interval workout. Keep it simple focus on the task at hand. So no smart watch. I actually like that for this Casio. And I'll just run you through the modes of the watch real quick. Here you go. We've got the time, the heart rate, the timer, okay, the stopwatch, the compass, altimeter, barometer, and thermometer, uh, thermometer are all in one place, okay? And I found the thermometer to be very accurate, just so you know. Um, in the testing, your training log, okay, it does track your, it does have a training log feature. I didn't get into that too much uh, just because I was using other watches over the last month as well, but it does have a training log. I like that. It's got your training status as well, and then your notifications. So if you do want to stay a little bit connected, you know, to work, especially if you're busy with work and you need notifications on your watch, it does have that Bluetooth connectivity for your notifications, whether it's emails coming in or text messages or whatever the case may be. And on the back of the watch, you've got the heart rate sensor, which is VO2 max capable, okay? And you know, I'm not a heart rate guy. That's not how I train. Uh, but if you are a heart rate person, I found the heart rate to be very, very accurate, very comparable to the uh, Polar Vantage V, which I also train a lot with. And my last positive for the Casio G-Shock is the battery life. Unbelievable. Um, so here are some numbers on your screen, okay? Just some basic stats behind the battery life. Not to mention the fact that if you are in a location that has sunlight, it is going to recharge, okay? Uh, but I have attempted Nolan's 14 here in Colorado. Here are some stats about Nolan's 14. It's a crazy, epic mountain adventure. And this also connects to the title of the vlog. Um, I'm always nervous going out for these crazy big mountain adventures. Is the watch gonna last? Is it gonna last for 40 hours? 50 hours, 60 hours, especially when you're doing uh, GPS tracking, right? That drains your battery life. So winner, winner, chicken dinner right here for those big, crazy, long efforts. Would I wear this watch in uh, next in 2021 uh, marathons on the road? No way. It's way too heavy, way too clunky. Uh, it's way too rugged, frankly. But for these big mountain adventures, especially, 
I am very intrigued. I haven't done it yet. Um, I just am not in that mode of training yet, but this definitely will be uh, my go-to watch for those big, big mountain adventures. Anybody thinking about doing the Barkley Marathon? Boom, right there. I mean, imagine the bar, who doesn't, uh, who hasn't seen the documentary? I'll try and link to it. There's some great documentaries out there about the Barkley Marathon, upper right-hand corner. It's this crazy, uh, it is a race, but it's more of a mountain adventure in the, in the mountains of Tennessee. And some people are out there for days and days. And so anyway, this, that is my last positive for the Casio uh, G-Shock uh, GBDH1000. All right, everybody. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching my uh, little foray into running watch technology for all of you here in the studio. Question of the day, what is your, what has been your favorite running watch over the past 24 months? So back to 2018 and explain why, if you could, why it is your favorite running watch. Oh, cannot wait to read your answers down in the comments. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. I don't know what to toss it back to. We'll toss it back. You know what? I have done some other running watch reviews, but it's been a little while. Again, DC Rainmaker, he is the go-to guy for me if you want to learn more about running watches. Um, so right there, right there to that vlog from probably two years ago. All right, everybody. Seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.